Hey everyone, in this video today, we're gonna to be talking to you guys about artwork, specifically for our super color transfers. We'll cover the different file types we accept, vector versus raster, any issues we see with your artwork, and even some tips to help you out. This is our Adobe Illustrator file. You guys can tell, you'll see that dot right there, that's gonna be dot AI, that stands for Adobe Illustrator. One quick way to see if you're dealing with vector artwork in Adobe Illustrator is do Control Y. If you're on a PC, you're going to hit Command Y if you're on a Mac. Here we have a high res PNG. How do I know it's PNG? I'm going to click on it. I'm just going to move it over here. You'll see it has no background. That makes it a PNG. I'll zoom in so you can see how those lines look pretty good. It's pretty high res. Now I'm going to open up the low res PNG so you guys can really see how different those were. We'll zoom in. Very different than the one we just saw. Very jaggedy lines. People would call, people would reference this as being pixelated or blurry. Adobe Illustrator files can be saved as PDFs. You are just going to want to make sure if you're saving your Adobe Illustrator as a PDF that you keep a certain quality about it. And I'll show you what I mean here. So we'll do save as a PDF here. So you can see these are your options that are going to give you SVGs in there too. So you could save this design as an SVG. Basically what it's giving you, these are your vector options. So we're going to save as a PDF. Save here. You're going to want to make sure this preserve Illustrator editing capabilities. You want to make sure that's checked. So hit save. All right. Good to go. So in this case, I'm going to save my Adobe Illustrator file as an EPS, meaning if I needed to send it to anybody else, it's going to be just more universal. So somebody with CorelDRAW or um, I think if you have like the business version of Silhouette, you can open this as well. But so saving as an EPS is just more universal for other people that have different design softwares to use because Adobe Illustrator is specific to Adobe Illustrator. So we're going to save that as an EPS. Also, if you guys are sending to anybody that has a lower version, a different version of Illustrator, you can save it to different ones that they have too. Because sometimes if you have an older version of Adobe Illustrator, you cannot open newer files. So that's where you could down save if you need to, but in this case I don't need to. All right, so we'll open it back up just so you guys can see. It's gonna be the exact same. We'll find it here. This guy, you can see it's right there is the name. Looks beautiful. I'm going to save as an SVG. Like I talked about earlier, that is going to be a scalable vector graphic, which is exactly what you need for high quality artwork. So SVG, similar to an EPS, very universal file. Lots of different softwares can use this file type. So I don't ever touch anything there. Something to note about SVGs, you actually need to download them and then open them up in your software. Because if you take a look here, some of our downloads, it shows up as an internet file. So you're going to want to just download and open up in the software you need it. There we go. Still looks great. It's just what we need. And last but not least, the thing you don't want to upload, it's going to be a JPEG and we'll show you why. So JPEG here looks very similar to everything else we've looked at, right? I'm going to take it off of this white background or I'm going to take it off this white artboard over, move it over here. Dun, 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 has a white background. We don't want that. We want those PNGs, those EPSs, PDFs, Adobe Illustrator, SVGs, all of it, but the JPEG. Now that I have my Adobe Illustrator file open, I'm gonna to talk to you guys a little bit about the difference between vector versus raster. So vector is defined by points. And what I mean by that is your design software, you will need to create this shape and every shape has points. I will zoom in and show you guys that in just a second. Um, why vector is so great for artwork is because everything about it can be changed. I can click on every single thing in this artwork and change it if I want to. I could change the color, I can change the size, I could even completely distort the shape if I want to, and it's still gonna be great quality. Meaning if I zoom in, I won't see anything blurry, all lines are gonna be crisp and clean. All right, so I'm gonna mess around a little bit here. So I'm going to zoom in so you guys can see, look how nice and clean that is. Zoom out. A good tip to show if anything is a full vector in your Adobe Illustrator software, 
For Max, it's going to be Command Y. And then for PCs, it's going to be Control Y. What that's doing is showing you wireframe. So as you can see there, all of those little points, all of those little shapes, those are vector objects. Now, if we were to go cut this in HTV, there would be a lot of work we would need to do or separate the layers at least, because if we cut like this, it's going to be a whole mess. But we're just looking at it for the vector aspect of it. All right. So now when I was talking about points, I'm going to zoom in so you guys can see one of those. We'll go up to this lovely rose here. All right, so I'm going to click on it. So do you see, let's see if I can zoom in even more. See all these little points right here? I'm circling with my mouse. All of those are a different point. So I can click on this, change it any way I want. Not that I want to do that, it doesn't look great. But you can see everything can be manipulated. I could change the curve of it if I want, if I don't like that. I can change the color if I want. So if we decided I don't want, oopsie. So if we decided I want this to be a darker green color, I can go in and change it. So if I want this to be a darker green, I can go in and just completely change that color. There we go. So now I'm gonna move on to raster. So with raster, that's gonna be anything that's like a photograph. That's the best way to kind of associate what it is. So it's gonna have what's called pixels. So vector we define by points, raster we're gonna define by pixels. And so pixels are basically tiny squares that are gonna make up your entire design. So we will open one up here. All right, so I have two different files open here. These are both images. So I'll show you, I'm gonna zoom in and you can see all what those little, where the lines seem like jagged or blurry. Those are gonna be pixels. So I can't go in and I can't change this stem to be a different green. I can't change, I can't touch a point. These are all, it's the way it is. There's no changing it. Now, what I have is I have two different files here. I'm gonna show you the difference between a PNG and a JPEG. So this is the same artwork I had in Vector, but I saved it as a JPEG. You can see it has the white background all on it. I can't take that off. That's the way it is. There's no taking it off unless you were to bring it in Photoshop and remove the background. Now when it comes to a PNG, here's my PNG. Because I saved it as a PNG, it has no background. So PNG, no background, JPEG will always have a background. How this relates to Supercolor is Supercolor transfers need to be submitted without a background. So if you have that vector file, that's even better. But if for some reason you don't have the vector, you're gonna wanna get us that PNG so it doesn't have the background. When it comes to your PNGs, you're gonna wanna make sure you're saving as a high resolution. And what that means is here, I'll go in and I'll show you, we will resave this rose here. I will save it as a high and a low. So we're gonna go file, export, and I'm gonna go PNG. And this is where everything really matters. So when you see in here, it says resolution on the screen. You'll see resolution on the screen right here. That 72 is gonna be great if this is only going on the web. If this is just a web file that you're throwing on your website, you wanna put your logo there, that's just fine. But for printing, you wanna have the highest resolution possible. Typically that is gonna be 300. So I'm gonna click this drop down here and high 300. Next, you're gonna click okay. And I'm zooming in, it's control plus if you guys are on a PC, it's gonna be command plus if you were on a Mac. So, I don't know if you guys can see the difference between the two of these, I sure can. The right one over here, that's gonna be our high resolution, that's the one we saved at 300. If you take a look over here, this is our 72. You can definitely see a quality difference of how smooth those edges are. So saving is super important. And if you are somebody that you don't design and you have an artist, I would make sure to be telling them that. I'd be making sure either if they can get you the vector file 
or if they can make sure they're giving you the highest resolution image possible. All right. So the only limitation we really have with doing a super color transfer is those drop shadows and glows. So if you're not familiar with what those are, I can show you one real quick here. Go to stylize, drop shadow. I'll just put a quick one on so you guys can see. So you guys see how this hand now has the shadow behind it? We are, not un we are unable to produce that in a super color transfer. Without being too technical, the short answer is it doesn't have a crisp line. You have to think of this as it's a screen print and screen prints need crisp lines to run properly. So with this fading to nothing, the ink's gonna have nowhere to go. So if you do turn an artwork that does have a drop shadow or even a glow, we are gonna ask that you remove it and resubmit your artwork. When submitting your size on your super color transfer, you're gonna wanna make sure you keep your width and your height proportional. And what I mean by that is if you were to submit something that's a circle design, here I can make one off to the side here. A circle is equal on all sides, right? So it, let's say this is a four by four design. You don't want it two by four because that's gonna completely distort your size. So always making sure in the back of your mind you're understanding the size of your design, meaning the proportions and what that would mean and you submit it. So if you were to submit something and it looks stretched, definitely let us know and we can adjust that size for you. You want this rose eight inches high and by me having this chain locked, it's gonna move everything proportional. So I'm gonna type eight inches high and that made it about seven and a half inches wide. If you know you guys want your rose eight inches tall, you are more than welcome to put in the width section proportional. We know exactly what that means and we'll be good to go. And then you won't ever have to worry about your design being squished or scaled different. So the last thing I wanna to talk to you guys about is gonna be CMYK versus RGB. So if you guys have ordered a super color before, you're gonna see on our color options, we're gonna ask you if you want your design printed in CMYK or Pantone. Pantones can only be done in vector artwork and you will need to know the specific Pantone number. If you don't, if you're not familiar with Pantones, don't worry about it, that means you don't really need it. So CMYK is gonna be what everything prints in. Pretty much everything in the world that's being printed is printed in CMYK. So RGB is for the web. And what you'll notice that I'm gonna show you is how different the color, some of the colors can look. RGB is super vibrant, bright, because they're supposed to be seen on screens. CMYK is definitely gonna look a little bit duller because it's gonna be for printing. You just can't achieve those brighter colors. Basically mixing paint like you would, you can't achieve the same thing in RGB, or CMYK that you do RGB. So we will open some stuff up here. Actually, I have one open. So when we saved it, let's see here, RGB. So it, this saved in an RGB color mode. So we're gonna change it to CMYK. Did you see it slightly changed? Not a whole lot. So sometimes it's not gonna be a huge difference. See, I just went back and I'll do it again. Color mode, CMYK. It's gonna be your blues or like your bright greens that are really gonna change on you. So I can do it again here. We'll go, we'll make a new document. I'm gonna set my default to RGB right now so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Wow, how Canadian did I sound right there? Talk about? Sorry, no offense Canadians. I'm North Dakota, it's dang near right there. Okay, so we'll just type. So you can see, super bright, super colorful. That looks awesome, right? But this is made for the web. So you see I have RGB here. My color mode is RGB. This is not how these are gonna print. So I'm gonna show you right now of switching from RGB color mode to CMYK. So you'll see here. Look how flat those went. The red and orange you didn't notice as much, but these three right here definitely changed. So it's gonna be important when you guys are designing that you design, try and get in that mind space of designing in CMYK. So when you create your document, especially if you're an illustrator, make sure your color mode is set to CMYK. This will ensure that your colors will print as close to your original artwork as possible. We do try to let you know if we do see a huge discrepancy 
of your artwork coming in just to give you a heads up so you can reformat your artwork and resend it in to get closer to what you're looking for. All right, thank you guys so much for joining me today. That about wraps up our artwork for super color transfers. Today we talked about the different file types, vector versus raster, and some common problems we see with your artwork. Let us know if you have any other questions you want us to cover. If you guys like this kind of in-depth artwork series, we definitely can keep it going for you, but don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe below. Thanks guys.